Hello and welcome to Tykes TV. Uh, got Luke, Luke Goddard on. It's been a while, we work and everything like that, but it's always great to have Luke on. Uh, thanks for joining us, Luke. Um, welcome, mate. Been a while, a uh, lot has happened, you know, uh, new gaffer in place, Daryl Clark, transfer window up to now. Uh, obviously, some questionable results and performances and stuff like that. And there's a certain Carabao Cup game going to Man U. Um, so, yeah, Luke, I mean, where do you want to start? I mean, do you want to, your thoughts about appointment to Daryl Clark, first off? <clears throat> um, I think, well, it, it were a good appointment um, in terms of, I, I like him as a person. He seems to come across well. Um, it's refreshing to hear him being honest and open about mistakes he's made, which I think is important because, you know, it's putting emphasis back on himself instead of the players. I think of, mm. uh, he takes the pressure off the players. It's a, a trick Ferguson used to use all the time. He'd take responsibility if it were a poor performance. But, you know, I think he's still learning about the players, I think. Um, it's only early days, of course, but the brand of football seems good when it's going good. Um, I, I think it was a, a decent appointment, um, given the fact that he was fourth or fifth, sixth choice. Um so, you know, you're looking at the likes of Tall Hammer that was going to be appointed and then we made that mistake about the Brexit paperwork and, mm. you know, the visa issues. And, you know, that was a bit of, you know, we'll not go into it because it's well documented how much of a farce it was to be fair, the whole process. Um, but they got Clark in place and he's, he's done well in the lower leagues. I think this will be his biggest job in terms of uh, expectation from the fans and pressure to get back into the championship. He's not coached at that level, so... You know, he, he wants to do well. You can see it in him. And uh, I think he's got good principles and morals. And, and as a person, he seems to be um, a decent character. So hopefully he can resonate that with the players and get a bit of a... Just get get a bit of a, a hard-working culture going again. Um, obviously, you know, I, I didn't agree with the timing of Collins' sacking. I said that to you. Mm. You know, when we spoke about, um, I think we last spoke before the Bolton game, but I, I still thought it was the wrong decision regardless if they knew that, you know, Collins wasn't going to be the long term. I just thought the timing really put us in a bad position into that last few games yeah. um, and really undermined that semi-final process. However, we are where we are. And, um, you know, we've obviously had a inconsistent start to the season. You know, we're, we're seventh and we've not played as best football. And I feel that, there's a, there's a lot more to come. Um, there has been some good performances and also some disappointing ones. And um, it's very reminiscent of last season with Collins to a degree where, um, especially at home, yes, we have got that win out of the way and that's a psychological thing. Hopefully we can push on with that now. I think the Sheffield United win was a, a big big um, like hurdle towards getting over that and then going on to win the league game. Um, however, I also feel that, you know, especially on Saturday, you know, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but we've, we've also dropped points at home already this season. Uh, you know, Mansfield first game, you know, we started that really, really poor first 20 minutes and then came back and played well, but it was too late. And then it, it seems to me we're, there's still like areas to the game that we're, we're still struggling with in terms of, I feel like, I want to see more 90 minute performances and that's probably an ideal, idealistic world where I probably expect more than what we're going to get. Um, and I have to be realistic with the players that we've got. However, you know, if we, you know, for me, you know, it's the third season in the league now and the aim should be, you know, it's obviously, I think it's tougher than last year in terms of the standard, in terms of just the, the money that's been spent, etc. And the teams are better that's got promoted and the teams that have stayed have recruited more and obviously likes of Birmingham, Birmingham have recruited, obviously, you know, vast amounts. So it's a tougher league in that aspect. But for me, we should still be pushing for top six. However, if we get top six, I think it w it'll have done all right. However, I think it's, I think, you know, overall, it is, is, it, is it a better team than last season? In some areas, yes. In some areas, no. Um, and obviously we've got to give him a, obviously a long time, you know, we've got to give him a, a time to develop his, his style again. We, like I've said to you before, mate, it's got to be stable. 
it's got to be some form of you know continuity. We can't keep being doing this merry-go-round every season. It doesn't do anybody any good. You know, mm. well, you know, we've done, we did this. Obviously, we were arranging to do a video before Clark got appointed, and we did the same when Duff got appointed, and the same when Collins got appointed. Yeah. It's like three years in a row. We, you, people could watch back and see, you know, that we've. It's this, you know, obviously three years, three managers. The, you know, that you, you need to have stability to progress, and I, that's the big word for me. Is now getting something in place where you're probably not going to see a Daryl Clark side maybe for the next two to three transfer mm-hmm. windows where they're going to have to get some lads out that they're clearly the, the thought we're going to do better than they have, um, that they've sent out on loan or they obviously got rid of. And, you know, going back to Clark, I like him, you know, and um, I hope he does well. Um, and, yeah, you know, he wasn't my first choice. So I don't think anybody would have thought of Daryl Clark as their first choice, but you got, we've got to get behind him and... Um, it's, I think it's important that he knows what the town's about. You know, he seems to he seems to get it, um, and that's a big thing, I think. And hopefully, from him and the players' perspective, we can get behind him. Obviously, you know. Um, so yeah, I think the jury's out so far. We'll we'll have to wait and see and see where December January. I think that's a good. I think that's a good marker to say that's you, you can make a decent judgment on him after that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing we like Daryl Clark as well, and before we get on about play as well, it kind of links up with players. You look at like Mark Roberts and Conor Wood and coming back, two ex Barnsley lads know the culture and fabric at club. So I think them were some crowd pleaser stroke, old heads, what we needed kind of thing on the pitch because we could see game management, and we'll get on about it in. in things coming up but one thing I like about this and you touched on it as well is that every year it seems to be a manager review you know you can go back to Duff you can go back you know, you know what I mean it's like go back to a uh, shop every, every year it seems to be uh, all we're going to get and I think that's what needs to break and one thing I liked about this at minute is that Clark Daryl Clark's been allowed to bring in some coaches his own goalkeeping coach got Whiter coming in it, it seems to be Invested on players, which we'll get on about in a minute. But what I've liked to see is like he's wanting his backroom staff sorting out. And for me, I'm thinking that's a good appointment because you're not just going with floor and just going with what we've got. He wants to improve the standards, not probably to better him, obviously, but better setup. And I think now you've got that way, you've got. Nick Eden, under, uh, under 18. You've got Bobby Assel, we know, at the recruitment. You've got a sporting director in. You've got uh, Devaney still there. You've got White. You've got Bitten and your goalkeeping coach. You've got John Stead there. And I'm thinking, do you know what? This looks more like a professional setup. Stand, uh, uh, yes, a coaching setup. I don't know what what your thought on well, that is. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I think that's, you know, it's, it's a basic requirement that a football manager should have his own coaches. Um, I know that you try and recruit and instead of and promote from within, and it's good to see that we've got former players involved behind the scenes, especially in the younger setup. Because you know, long term, that's our bread and butter. How we're going to develop players? Um, mm. Because when you haven't got vast amounts of money, your academy needs to be good. You know, because that's where you're going to create your young next crop of players. You know, obviously we've seen, you know, Jorgen Nathan come through, Jarlo. Mm. Um, you know, and that's that's promising and um it's what it, like i've said that should be a bread and butter in terms of it right if you can't spend loads of money we've got to make sure that the next crop of lads that's coming through are ready and mm. you know there's two or three of those lads that you're not going to throw them in the deep end and kind of let them run before they can walk type scenario but you but you've read them but you gel them into the to the first team set up in a, in a transitional way then you're going to get good good results from it in terms of like the, the backroom staff i think it's a basic requirement that to have any form of cohesion and any form of kind of unity where you're going you've got to have lads that's going in the right direction from a coach's perspective because before we've had coaches that there were a couple of coaches from like one coach that had stayed like Lowman had stayed no. um you know from from another previous I can't remember, obviously, the ins and outs, but there were coaches that had been with different managers that were still at the club, and it's kind of like you're hanging on to the last remnants of the former 
mm. era of that manager, if you get what I'm saying. And I think from a from a coaching and a, and a stylistic perspective, you need to have coaches that's been brought in by the gaffer, and you know, and rightly so, he should be having more influence at the club. It's not about him taking over and doing what they used to do in the eighties, where they do everything. Like, you know, the, like the Cloughs and New Warnocks back in the day used to, you know, control the whole aspect of the club. Um, it's obviously a lot more integrated with behind the scenes. That's why I've got your, you know, your director of football. You, you've got your chief exec that's got more of a behind the scenes role than what, you know, Khalid and, you know, Gautier Ganai and Dan Murphy used to have where they used to do everything like do do everything i yeah. think you need to kind of let the football reins be handed over to somebody that can just focus on the recruitment and how you develop a culture and moving forward and it's about time mate it's about bloody time that mm. we start to see little little steps of improvement and of course obviously there's some aspects that i still feel that we don't help ourselves with and there's some aspects that i feel that we have improved in and there needs to be that open critique where you, you, you can be able to say stuff without, you know, and I think it's right right that if you're a paying customer, for instance, yourself, Neil, that goes to a lot of games, you know, you go to the own games, you've paid your hard-earned money, question stuff, you, you know, you should be entitled to do that. And, mm. you know, um, from, from a behind-the-scenes perspective, I think having that open conversation with a fan base, you shouldn't have to agree with everything, but I think having that kind of, transparency and that openness is all that the fans are asking for and I think in some degrees I feel that they have made progress and then in some other areas I feel that we're still um, lacking yeah and I think it's a it's it, yeah it comes for me a little bit of stubbornness and also thinking I, I think it's just not reading the room at times and you know I th that kind of you're engaging with the fans, but in a way that it's kind of you miss you like it again. You misunderstanding what the fans are expecting and what they're wanting. It needs to so, be a better connection, doesn't it, with fan base? Yeah, and, I mean, I, I, definitely. You know, um, I always feel that when they do those fan question things, I think yeah, it's great that you're meeting the fans, but you, I think it's kind of it, it. Sometimes it's a bit of a ticking exercise where it's like right, well, we've met you now, well, you know, and I think. Yes, mm. a lot of owners mm. never meet the fan base. I get that. There's a lot of owners that are terrible owners. You know, we could have a lot worse owners than what we've got. There's people in at the club behind the scenes that clearly care. Mm. You know, for instance, um, Julianne, you know, I've never met her. I don't know her to about her. I don't know her. But, yeah, she comes across completely, uh, you know, out there. But that's just her as a person, I, I suppose. And she clearly cares about the football club and her, inter and her art's in the right place. It just sometimes comes across the right way when, it, you know, I think you, if you're alienating a section of the fan base that are just questioning what you're saying and questioning some of the decisions, like, for instance, the, the third kit, you yeah. know, like, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a bigger picture and you know yeah, like yeah just, 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 just take that into account that it's just, it, you know, if they're paying customers, they have a right to say what they want to say and obviously never, you know, for instance, I've never like kind of condoned personal attacks on anybody. And I think that that's important for me to point out that, yeah, I've kind of called people behind the scenes and, you know, I was one of the big figureheads behind getting rid of the, the last regime, but <laughs> it needed to be done because let's see, you know, you know, let's, what's you know, happened look, since? Look, and what's, what, look, what, look, look what's happened in Belgium, for instance, yeah. you know, a club's folded due to them. So, yeah. you know, it, but also, it was never personal. I never met it personally. We just I knew I like know, issues people what knew yeah. what, what were wrong, and it, because I cared about the club, and I felt something needed to be done at the time, regardless if people said it were the right decisions or how mm. making things worse. Something needed to be done because the club could have easily been in the situation Ostend have been in, and that mm. sounds as over the top. It might do to some people. It might not have got that far, but it could have been. We could have. Mm. We were owned by them. And they had an active say in how the club were ran. So we needed people that cared a bit more to, to come into play and, and to, to kind of at least, you know, they don't have to be from the area. They don't have to be from Barnsley or South Yorkshire, but they've got to get the club. And I think mm. sometimes they do, sometimes they, they understand. And I think sometimes they just miss a few things that it's just like you're just missing a point there. Yeah. But yeah. Um, overall, I think there has been some improvements moving forward, going back to Clark and having a bit more of a say. It needs to be over a prolonged period of time. It can't just be like one transfer window. It's got to be, you know, kind of, yeah, 
you know, if, we're, if it's coming to a recruitment aspect, it's kind of, yeah, you, you've got two or three targets in terms of who you want to approach. But at the end of the day, it's the, it's the, it's the head coach that's coaching them lads on a day-to-day basis. None of this kind of XG shite, you know, how many touches per game they get. You know, for me, it's about what do they offer to the team in terms of scouting and getting that right and characters because, it, you know, at this level, that's important and bringing the right lads in. I mean, in terms of the Horan and Robert signings, you know, they're not the players in terms of, you know, they're obviously six, seven years older from when they, when they mm. first came to us. Um, and I think in, in some aspects, it was, a, you know, both of them are good signings. I mean, Connor's a good signing because of, of his experience and his, his, he's been a club captain. He knows the club inside out. I'm, su- I'm surprised I haven't seen him play more, if I'm being honest. Mm. Um, just in some games where I feel that we needed a bit of his experience yeah. Um, and I hope he does feature a little bit more and I get his 33 but I still think he can you know I think in the bigger games against your Birmingham's and your other fields I think you, you get him in that midfield and mm. even if it's just for, for, for an hour you just I think that that's where we need to be including him obviously we've not come up against a Birmingham or Exxon or others field yet but we will be mm. and he needs to feature, you know, and, and and get in there. I know we've got a good midfield at the moment, but at, but at the same time, I do feel that the an O-Ran in our side makes us a stronger team. To game uh, manage it. Yeah. Game management, leadership, knowing knowing how yeah. to work the referee, because referees are shite, aren't they? So, yeah. you know, the, the reason manipulated and it's as simple as like just getting in the rear, you know, it, and it's it's the old it's the old tricks, you know. You see players that come to work well back in the day and they used to just get in referees here mm-hmm. for for an hour, didn't sell loads, mm. just like just work referee, like yeah, to, you know, to say not right things, and you can see all decisions going other way. Mm. And in terms of Roberts, obviously, he's got a lot of threats in, in terms of set pieces going forward. He's obviously, he was, he was never the quickest the lads, Mark, but no. you know, and he's probably lost a pace, a yard of pace that he had before. But again, it's a, it's a steady, steady lad at the back that we could have done with last year. You know, he's a player that we could have done with last season, mm. you know, to just assure things up and have that experience at the back when we lacked it. But overall, in terms of the, the transfer window itself, I still feel we're a striker short, if I'm being honest. I feel that um, we, we we left it late. Not, and Humphreys was a... I, I think that's a good signing. Um, I liked McWigan. He's a bit of a... Kind of a, you know... Bit of a character, you need those players in your team. Bit of a some of liking them to James Norwood. Yeah, a little, little bit shit house kind of player. Thing, you know, you're a bit of a shit house in your side. You need that, and mm. you know, Kayla done. We were after him for it. Frustrated me like how we were after him for. We knew the price, and I just would have liked to have just gone and paid it rather than playing kind of this, you know, twenty grand, you know, and then go back. Yeah. Just pay it, and then you can focus on other targets then. Um, but it is what it is. Our recruitment was, you know, we didn't lose Phillips, which I'm surprised by. I thought somebody had come in with a better offer for him. I, I was going to ask you your thoughts on that as well, uh, Phillips. We'll get back to players what's coming, but you just mentioned it via Phillips. There were a, a lot of rumours going about saying that, oh, um, if Phillips or Luke O'Connell go, that'll be it. It'll just go to prove that Barnes is a selling club, which I think we've always been a selling club. I mean, no getting away from that, but it's cashing in at right price. And like people like saying after transfer window, well, uh, decent, uh, best, uh, best transfer window we've had because uh, Phillips is still here. I'm thinking, but I kind of get that. But in the same respect, that's all down to agents and everything like that. We knew what happened with Lee, um, Liam Kitchen. We knew his head had been turned, and mm. near I've held out, you know, for you know, fair play, held out for whatever four, four and a half million it was. So we feel it stopping here. If he'd have gone, would it have made a difference? And like, do you think the work what's been done with players, what's what's come in, like uh, Gabby Salina at uh, in goal and Keely Dunn and Humphreys? Do you think if Phillips had gone, it would have like tarnished it and said, "Oh well, we've had to sell a player to bring these in." Do you think that could have possibly happened? Um, I, I don't know, but it, it would have had an, obviously an impact on results because look at goals he's got. So you know, yeah. it, it speaks for itself. I mean, I commented on. Um, I don't know if it was Doug O'Kane or one of the social media commentators, and I, and and sometimes keeping a player is just as much as a signing, you know, mm. in in terms of keeping your players, you, you don't have to let four go to bring four in, yeah. you know. And as Maladen said, and to be fair, it's probably one of the first things the chief exec said, or like a director of football said that I agree with, you know. 
quality over quantity, you know, and we know that under, you know, when we had Conway and things like that, and when we had Marcus Shot, when we brought vast amounts of players and they just weren't up to standard. Mm. And I'd rather spend two million and get four lads in than spend six and get seven. You do know what I mean by that? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I think um, in terms of Philip staying, you know, yes, it has been, I, I would say it's probably been one of the most improved transfer windows. I wouldn't say it's been the best, mm. you know, you know, that we've ever seen. Um, because I mean, what do you kind of gauge that on? Um, yeah. But that is, you know, I, I think if we want to move forward again, we need to make an improvements where yes, we're not a team that's able to say no to five, six million, four million pound. We get that, but if you're going to sell a player, make sure that you get premium for him. And we've been guilty over the years where we've sold players for nothing, yeah. hardly next to nothing, or let players go end of the contracts, and we don't gain from it. Do you know? Um, where if you look in hindsight, letting Devante Cole go in Jan- January for a million would have been a lot better than letting him go for nothing and him basically walking around for four months of the season because he couldn't get a move in January. Mm. Um, so in terms of getting players on longer contracts, which is what they did, you know, started to do, you have got that more of a control over a player. And yes, sometimes, you know, for instance, with Styles, we had him the two seasons where he went to Millwall and Sunderland where he weren't playing for us, but he were under contract with us. Yeah. And they've managed to get, were it 600 grand for him? So about, about yeah. Around yeah. about that. For me, you know, I'd, I'd have, you know, you know, Plus the less wages, we, game off at wage bill. You, know, well. you know, again, that were another good move because, I've, you know, obviously we've all heard about him, about mm. him not wanting to play, which is, I mean, you look at Harry Kane when he were, um, I think he were linked to Man City when he were at Tottenham. Yeah. yeah. And he still, and that's the difference between a professional and somebody that's just played so 50 odd so, games, yeah. you know. And, you know, the way that, you know, so we'll go into Styles in a minute because mm. I've got a bit to say about that. But Phillips, you know, I like him. I think he's underrated. He's, he's not now, but I think he was underrated last season. But he's one of those players that, even if he's a, he is a quiet game, he can win you a match and yeah. you need him on field. And, you know, as we saw under Duff, I thought he improved the season gone on. I thought he had a quiet season last season, but I'm glad that, you know, he started, he's, that, that role clearly suits him where he's playing. And um, I think he's a good player and obviously he'll attract interest, but it's about the club like we did with Coventry saying, listen, if you want to buy kitchen, you've got to pay over price. Mm. Because obviously we've got to make sure that we're in a good position where we're not, losing out and we're having to buy, you know, where we're not in a, we have to be in a position where we're going to, yeah, we'll lose a player, but we're not going to necessarily be at a massive disadvantage. Whereas before we used to sell a player and be like, well, what do we do now? Yeah. yeah. You know, and we've got to be, I'm, I'm, you know, again, another positive, believe it or not, is that we're being a little bit more like hard, hard playing, hard nosed about it rather than just accepting first offer. Um, and if, if they want to end it day, Neil, they'll pay a price. Okay. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, going on to Styles, I mean, I thought, well, you know, he's played in pre-season and, and you know, do we give him a chance? And, and then I think, you know what, he won at issues, regardless of how bad shopping has bargained, where he were a player that visibly down tools that season when we went down into the championship and he was one of the main reasons why we were where we were because he's clearly got ability and that's the most frustrating thing is that he decided not to play, he decided not to play 100% each week, as others did, you know, and I think I wouldn't mind if he was of a poorer quality because I knew he probably would be given 100%. Where, is do, you think, in, do you think, I'm, I'm sorry for talking off, but do you think because you uh, were a Hungarian un- international or a bit, Billy Big Bollocks, I'm better than what I am and I shouldn't be here? And I've, I've, that's the impression I got because he, he seemed to fe- fe- feel his and find his and was at Barnsley to play this attacking midfielder and this and other. But for me, the only person that got out of him was Ishmael and that were left wing back with Britain yeah. on the side as a midfielder, didn't bring it to, to play. No, I mean, I bit. mean, I just think, yeah, I get that. You you know, you included it in Hungarian <laughs> setup. It's one of the reasons Alec left Rudersfield when we got relegated to say Polish setup. Mm. I get it, you know, it's it makes sense to join a bigger club West Brom. <laughs> Started really well. They're a big team in the championship. You know, they're a well supported club. Got a good owner, got a good coach. I get that. But act accordingly. Don't yeah. act, don't don't not want to play. Mm. 
you know, for me, maybe if he, he's probably, been, I don't know if he's being ill advised, obviously we don't know ins and outs, but for me, I think just have a, maybe it's just the person in me, but I just think, just act a bit more, just have a bit more morals about it. And I think it's just, I think, you know, if the club are saying, you know, we obviously we don't know ins and outs of what's yeah. gone on, but, you know, from what, what you can read is the fact that he, he decided not to want to play, which for me stinks, you mm. know, we're paying him a weekly wage, you know, that would have been over what, you know, four or five grand at least a week. Mm. Um, you think about how much he's getting a month, you think, well, least he could be doing is at least turning up and, you know, until he does go, yeah, then yeah, I think yeah. fans would have respected him a bit more. But just the way he conducted himself was shit, to be fair. And, you know, there's some players that are, that leave the club and I'm like, you know what, best of luck to you. And I always keep an eye on the performances when they play for someone else. I like, mm. I, like I, I, watch the, I, I watch and see how they get on and it's interesting to see and all the best for him. But some of them, when they conduct themselves like that, I ain't got... You got no time look. for them. No. Um, but it, going back to the transfer window again, you know, that was one of the things that we had, we had a lot of players that were still at under contract, like that we were struggling to get get the end of the contracts. We're like Leia Seca and Styles was another one. So so again, there's a couple of positives there, mate. Like it, like it weren't an amazing win. Do I still feel that we're, we're short in defence mm. and left back? I think we're short. O'Keefe's not the answer for me there. Um, he's not consistent enough. Um, and I would have liked, you know, and I questioned um, us not getting another striker. Um, but if they can get away with it till January and we're there and there about, then then we go again. But um, I think the recruitment was okay. You know, I'm not going to sit here and lambast it. We kept us better players. Hmm. Um, we, we brought lads in that, that are going to better the side. I would have liked some bit more quality up top and at, at the back, but also you can't get always what you want, can you? Sometimes you have to be realistic and be like, well, Rome weren't built in a day, so maybe there's a bit more patience that I've uh, learnt to uh, have over the last few years than before. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you touched on it as well uh, earlier on. Is that Daryl Clark? Bear in mind, this is his like first transfer window. Is I'm, I'm, I'm at times when you were seeing him on interviews on radio Sheffield and back, even he was getting frustrated. You could tell because he's outspoken, honest man, and I think you could tell frustrations that he was wanting. I mean, we won two one away at Lincoln. And he, he won't in best of moods, you know. Bear in mind, we've had a poor record there at Lincoln, but we won 2 1 and he won't happy with his standard performance. I'm thinking, if that's your standard, well, you haven't, you haven't seen many bounds against from last season, what football we're playing. So I'm thinking, it's called it art, you know. Is that to, I mean, go back to the game at weekend when we just like, like lost Stephen his 3 0. Basic schoolboy errors and he touched on that disappointing we've been working on that we switched off and you know that's what I want to hear is from a, a coach or a manager whatever you want to call them not making up an excuse like oh ref for this and we're a bit call it for what it is you'll get a lot more respect and I think Daniel Clark is gaining a lot more respect from fans because he's honest and people can see what's happening on pitch we don't want wool pulling over the eyes and I think that's what's happened too much lately in just modern day football, not just Barnsley, where a coach or a manager will come out and we'll just go with the floor, we blame ref for this, the AR for that. But, and I'm like, just don't get away from, you know, your defence for shit or certain players without, you know, naming and shaming. But you can see the game, just call it for what it is. I don't yeah. get all this culture there, trying to find excuses and this and other. I, I just don't get that. But, I mean, going back to Dallas Clark, his starts at season... I always thought me that it a bit like Duff. I don't know why. Is that he's got to have a couple of games to see, like you just said, there, learning about his players, learning about the style and formation. And one thing I've noticed about it, and I think maybe this might have been his undoing at weekend against Steven, is that he's not afraid to change it from three at back to go four. And like after half an hour, I think uh, Mansfield George Gent were playing his debut as like left wing back after half an hour. He took him off and brought Russell and changed it. And I'm like, well, that's a new statement and intent. But at yeah. the end of the day, that's his job, I suppose. And it's refreshing to see that he's been allowed to do that and actually manage the game on the pitch. Live by the sword, die by the sword motto, yeah. I suppose, isn't it? Where you, 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 you hold accountability if it's the right actions, we'll praise him if he makes it. And also, he'll be the first person to say, look, I got that one wrong. Mm. Um, I think, yeah, he had to bring Pines off at half time at the weekend. But I also felt that. You know, 
nil nil. You know, yeah, we didn't play great, but it was nil nil half time, and you don't have to be. For me, the way that I see it this season is results over performances. So mm. away from home, we can you know under Collins we played some all right football. We, we come out on losing side or we, we draw and drop two points because we didn't have that mentality. For me, at nil nil half time, I were happy with that because yeah. I, I know Stevenage for me is the you know, epitome of League One, League Two football. It's a, it's it's a small ground. It's you know, it's not. It's an awkward game in terms mm. of like there's lads that played at that level that have, you know, National League, League One, League Two players. Then they're gonna do the, the dirty work like they obviously yeah. did one on Pines. You know, that's just the, that's just the fo- that's how it was when I, I used to watch us. You know, when I was younger, when we played in in League One under, mm. you know. Spackman and all those sorts, yeah. you know, elbows going into faces were a regular thing, yeah. you know. Um, and yet, it were probably looking back, it were a bad challenge. But what I'm trying to say is that I think he made um, the second sub at half time, and I don't think he needed to. Mm. Um, and I didn't think he needed to change it round. And yeah, I knew we wanted to, you know, I've watched the interview as I'd after you wanted to get more control of the ball, etc. But I think maybe just wait five, ten minutes and then make that change. And I think. Yeah. You know, um, that second goal's killed us. Um, but for me, it was just the basics that within the you know that we didn't get right in the, in the second half. They wanted it more than us. Um, they bullied us from set pieces. We lost Pines. Obviously, that threat at the you know um, you know is a big presence at the back. You know, yeah. defending as well as going forward. And I think um, we just seem to just be not doing the basics right. And the, the league wonders if that's a term or you know they, they just did old school stuff on us. Just the second goal in particular was really frustrating to watch because he's just drifted in and there's no one marking him and it's a you know mm. it's a free free header and it's like you know and it's like kind of you see performance against Sheffield and then Crawley you know Bristol yeah. Rovers you know and then it's like starting to see some momentum here some consistency. However, you know we we wouldn't be where we are if we were more consistent than what we are. We are where we are for a reason. So it's a work in progress. We're not going to win every game of football. It would just, I would have liked us to have, you know, I would have been happy. I know this sounds weird, but I would have been happy with a point on Saturday because it's yeah. a weird place to go. We clearly were, we clearly were off it. Sometimes you're not going to be hundred percent in at the race. So just take a point and get out of there. And I think we just, that's where I would like to around to a feature a bit more where we just get those experienced lads on the game. You navigate the game properly and you just keep it as tight as possible and just get a point clean sheet, you get out of there and, you, you know, you just think, well, we weren't great, but we get something from it. I just think we're a little bit too naive at times on Saturday. Um, but it's a learning curve and the lads will be, you know, Connell again, mm. good to good to see him coming up and fronting up and saying, we weren't at it, it weren't good enough, it's yeah, not what it we expect. Yeah. You know, nothing better than going to Man U in Cup on Tuesday and, and kind of on a big stage showing what you've got and listen, I know this sounds weird. I'd rather it be a league game so we can rectify it and get three points back in the league again, because I want to be yeah. in, in the top six for, for you know, I want to be, I want to be up there. I don't want to be in seventh. I want to be for second, third, mm. but obviously it's a massive chance to, for the lads to get some real confidence and we are really good away following on a one-off game. Go out there. You're not going to be playing Man United every week, are you? So, what much of a better game to go out there and give it your all and be like, you know what, we're going to make up for Saturday. In terms, I, I want to see a good performance first and foremost. Yeah. Results, regardless. I want, and yeah, it's going to be obviously a huge difference between Stevenage and Man United. I get that. Mm. However, from from what we can do, the controllable stuff that we can do, we need to be better performance wise. And I just want to see us at it for a minute go, and just seeing those improvements and and you know the, it's. It's all it's all right if it's a one off game. You know, like I've said, sometimes you're not at it. Even so there's some games Man City aren't at it. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's how it's how you learn and reflect from that and put things right to move forward and to learn from your mistakes. Mistakes are sometimes good if you can learn from them in the long run. It's if you keep making those same mistakes that it becomes That's an issue funny. and you need to nip it in bud. And the only thing that concerns me is like the when we drop points. I think the home form is going to be really important for us this season. And you know we drop points on to Northampton. Yeah, uh, 2-0 up you know that felt like a loss that if I'm being yeah. honest because the manner of it and just you know control the do but you know again do the basics better you know game management in, and again 
the Mansfield, the, but it, but it, what what's gone's gone now. It's about you know I want to be seeing us being picking those points up against teams that we should on paper you know have the have the quality to beat those sides because that's where we need to be is is being you know getting those points on board and having the like we've said before reaching those standards because why not because you need to be reaching for those standards because it's not good enough if we keep, if we keep dropping points at home there's no point winning games away if we keep losing games at home or drawing games at home we've got to be making sure that as home is home, home grounds is bread and butter and then when we go to a Stevenage for instance we can afford to get a point if we're not playing fantastic yeah. um but however I, like you know this is probably the calmest I've been for a while because I feel like you know what it, I, I've been I've had my hopes up too many times over the years to get um you know to invest in but I, I feel like quietly confident that there's you know it's a marathon not a sprint and there's a lot of games to be played and one game don't define us but um I think a good opportunity tomorrow to go to go to Old Trafford and Go, go there and shock them because yeah they, they had a good win at the weekend but if we turn up and they don't you never know mate I, I yeah. can remember when we when we uh, drew him at Old Trafford in, in FA Cup FA over Cup. the year yeah, and yeah. we got robbed um, yeah. Gary Neville foul on Lidl in penalty area and then yeah. we beat him in, in replay and it won't I were fortunate enough to be able to see that Barnsley side uh, in the Premier League and remember it well and um, it's not often that you get to play your no. bigger sides in cup because I think we we played Chelsea, didn't we? In, were that during COVID or uh, during lockdowns that we lockdown, played Chelsea think, yeah. in League Cup? Yeah. So yeah. you know we've had some decent ties over the last, you know in the League Cup over the years. We had Tottenham, Everton, I can remember coming to well. So it's nice for the fans to go away to obviously Man United, the you know massive side. You know it'll be you know a really good atmosphere and. Sod's law, we turn up and we, 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 we give ourselves a really good... That'd just be so bad, the one yeah. we lose three nil at Stevenage and then we do some at tomorrow. Do but, move, yeah. you know, it's a chance for lads to write themselves in club's history, isn't it, really? You yeah, know, it's a one-off sure. game, you know. You'll be remembered forever if you get a goal at Old Trafford and win, win as a, a, a game at League Cup. And they might underestimate us. They might think they just have to turn up and represent yeah. the rest as a history, but... I think we should be doing what they did to us in, in second half on Saturday, which is putting ourselves about, getting the mm. face. You know, you know they're, they're going to be rolling off floor as soon as they get touched. So if if you're going to do it, do it properly do it within properly. the laws of the game. <laughs> um, game but manager. you know, let them know, you, let them know they're there. You know, and, and if they beat yeah. us quality wise, which is probably you know they're going to be huge favourites, then fair enough. But go out there and, and give you a good account of yourselves, and you know, do the club proud and do the team proud and. You know, I think the ba- we're not expecting to win tomorrow. It's just about representing the town and representing the team and, and giving a good account of ourselves. And I think if we if we go and give hundred percent, then I'm, then the, we'll, we'll obviously happily clap them off. And I think we will turn up tomorrow because obviously it's the extra incentive. Of, I don't think many lads that's played in our team have played at Old Trafford before. So that's a thing, isn't it? You know, but Ten Hag for me. <laughs> I, I, I personally don't rate him. I think, it, and, I, and I think Man United side when it's going good, they're, they're a good team. But when backs up against Wall, as you've it, seen on other years, it's not the, the Man United are old. It's mm. a team that can easily under pressure fold. Um, so for me, we need to be at it for minute one. And you know, tactics wise, I would like to see you know wing backs overlapping and, and get it out wide and. Um, Get it up to Cosgrove and get it, make his presence known and be picking up off, you know, second balls and doing the basics, you know, winning again, your numbers. Again, we think you'd like to start Jallo. A lot's been made about that because he came on in the second half against Stevenage and he thought he would want to probably, well, I've seen him man at match, but he would probably want to shine in lights. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I, I definitely think about it. I mean, there is that aspect of if we haven't got the ball, how good is he control, you know, controlling his positioning without having the ball? Yeah. However, you need an outlet as well. You, you know, you can't just defend for, for 90 minutes because, you know, for me, that's not a way to go to a Man United and win a game. You've got to do a little bit of that, but also be playing your, your own, having a having a, some form of knowledge of where the ball's going to go when you, yeah. when you get yeah. it, yeah, and having an outlet. So for me, he is that option, isn't he? You know, he, he can beat a man, he's direct, he, he's got pace, he's, you know, his youthfulness. He'll not be scared, he'll be thriving on an occasion like that tomorrow. So why not? Why not, mate? 
Um, and if he's obviously, if he's not doing great, you can always bring him off, you know, mm -hmm. and, it, and, and again, it's where, where that is good is, you know, we're not, you know, he's not the finished article, but he's, he's got potential. And mm -hmm. the only way he's going to learn is by being in those situations, you know, and I think sometimes we've been guilty of playing to players too much when the, when the clearly at the depth, like Jasper Moon, you know, yeah, he were yeah. a lad that had come through and he just weren't ready. It would just weren't up to the standard, and you know we kept playing him just because to justify trying to get something for him because we were a young defender. And I think sometimes you just need to develop the player and the lad as well. Where you know if it's not working from one, you know you don't have to play him every game. Sometimes mm. it's better to have a week out and just to take a step back from it all. But mm. in terms of tomorrow, mate, why not? He played well at the weekend. He's clearly in good form. You know he's, he's obviously come back from injury and feels you know decent. You know in terms of his fit, fitness and health. So why not, mate? I, I would like, obviously, Cosgrove to start to have that presence up top because I feel like, you know, I think they'll probably play Maguire tomorrow to nullify that threat. But, yeah. you know, if, if you, win, you win it second balls, you, you know, for me, having a lad over the shoulder that can have a bit of pace one-on-one, -on -one, then, you know, it's anybody's game. But, for, you know, I think if we just keep it simple, get it in there half and play, get your diags and your lads overlapping, you know, get like Cotter on ball, he's, you know, he's been a revelation this season. He's yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. Completely different player to to last few seasons, and you know that's again we don't know ins and outs, but is that good man management from Clark? You know, it's and looking it's, like that, isn't it? At minute, it's yeah. strange, isn't it? How some players just don't seem to work for some lads, and then when they play with certain coaches, it seems to work for them. So you know, get get it out wide, get lads on ball. We you know we've got lads that can have a bit of individual skill, and why not? You know. Mm. We're going to be defending for large parts of it, and I'm sure they'll be coming up with a game plan. But if we can take it into the second half and it's still nil nil, you know, break it down into quarters, you yeah. know, get it into the first 20, keep them quiet, have a few chances. Longer the game goes on at nil nil, it's a bigger chance for us. Confidence will grow. But for me, don't go there and, you know, have any regrets type thing because, you know, if, if, if there's an opportunity to win and we're like, oh, we're mm. so close, but so far. But again, looking forward to it because it's a chance for those lads to go out there and if we can get a big win there, it can then really be a big spur to then do well in league because we're like, well, if we can beat Man United side, we can we can beat anybody, you know, yeah, to kind of get that confidence, confidence, you know, yeah. just to push us on. And even if we don't win, if they feel like, well, we've pushed Man United for 90 minutes, you know, we've given a really good account of ourselves, we, we, we're more than able to be, to be top six end of the season. Yeah. Um, because confidence is a massive thing. It's so, under, it's so, it's so noticed that Massive having having a good confidence and morale in the side is it can be a real big difference between success and failure. Um, and your mental can, state as well, isn't it? Because it's like yeah, it's a, yeah. it gives you that extra belief, that extra spur. Yeah. It's like you can look, look back on that and think, yeah, do you know what? If you get a good account of the Suns at Manuel, why can't we do this? And I think, you know, that'll give you an extra belief as well. And especially at young kids, because you, you know, you, you're still looking at potentially still some at young ones. Uh, look, uh, look at Connell's like captain. And he's still learning to be a captain. You know, you've on about Jal over You've on about Keely Dunn, highly rated player. He's still a young kid. He's sent in, in football in terms. So it's like, what a stage to be playing. Yeah, it's a one-off, but we're on Theatre of Dreams. We're at Old Trafford. And I, I said in other video, if you go to any stadium, such as like Anfield, uh, Arsenal's, Tottenham's, a big football stadium environment like that, who don't want to play in an environment like that? then you shouldn't be playing football. So people, this is what you aspire to. Wembley, it's like, this is where the stage is. What can I do? Let, let me show the people, the fans, the TV audience, what, you know, Neil Ellis or Luke Goddard is all about. And you're time to shine. And I think this is for a young kid. You med it, go and show him what you can do. Definitely. And, you know, when, when every lad or girl is a, aspiring footballer when they're younger they always dream of playing at man united and at yeah. wembley and at new camp and all big stadiums in the world and you know it's what an opportunity like you've said there you know you'll be like imagine thinking out you know this is the, probably might be my only chance to play at old trafford in my career mm. so go out there and give it your all and mm. you know it's just 11 against 11 they've got to, they've got to break it down like that the, yeah. do the basics right win your headers work the line old school it you know do the basics well, get it in there half. None of this passing front back, I don't want to see that because for, I don't think we'll win a game of football that way. We might be able to break them, you know, if, if, you, if they're committing and do it every now and again, I get that. 
and I like to see us play football, but do it in the right areas. Yeah. Don't be creating any unnecessary stress. Pressure on your sons. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, mate, and, and then if we're going to press, be on to, you know, do it in do it in numbers rather than one or twos because there's no point then. You know, if either, because sometimes I see over the years we've been guilty of pressing only in ones and twos and then we sit back and then it's like kind of what system are we playing here? Are we sitting and are we, are we like kind of absorbing pressure and then moving forward with it when we get the ball? Are we yeah, trying to break up play there yeah. and yeah, and do Egan press a bit more? So I think they'll, they'll have a good game plan and I, I can't wait. I'm really looking for, I'm really looking forward to seeing how many bars, if, how, many, how many tickets have we sold up to now? Uh, I think we're knocking up about 6,000, something like that. When when I heard it, I think at weekend it was like about five and a half, something like that. Yeah, so, I saw five nine, but I don't know. You yeah. know, them, I don't obviously know what tickets are running out, but I know it's obviously again. Um, the the modern day football fan isn't thought of with the ticket prices. You know, it's ridiculous. I mean, why not just do you know? Man, why have they not just do twenty quid? Mm. Like, why not? It's we're not, you know, I, I don't understand it. Me, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Um. It's bad enough going to Leeds and paying forty two quid, you know. But it's yeah. it's just it's just honestly a joke. I, I just think fans always get fought, and you know this is another thing that that we, we, we've probably missed talking about is the Sky putting every game nearly on on TV. Oh, and I think streaming it, thing, yeah. It's just keeping away. It's just keeping away the, the you know the home ticket season fan. You know, if it, if it's cold on a Tuesday night, you're going to stay at home, aren't you? Compared mm. to going to yeah. watch us play Shrewsbury minus three. Yeah. Because it's on telly, you know, and I think back in the day you didn't have a choice. You just went because that was the game that you had to go to. And I think the lower leagues is where you make you, you know, is is where the football is. You know, that's kind of that's the backbone of English football is the lower leagues. And I think if you're just kind of doing it for a corporate audience where it's all about sponsorships, and I just think you're driving the, the hardcore fan away. Mm. Um, one one thing I will say is. Uh, the, the beer ticket prices at Oakwell is nothing short of extortionate. I cannot, and, you know, I went to watch the boxing at Oakwell and I thought, oh, well, the, the, the £6.50 we are Madrid, you know, it, it's got to have a cherry on top and, you know, it's got to come with all expenses, you know. It's got to be the best pint I've ever had, basically, to be coming out at six fifty. I mean, mm. I, I, I don't mind paying that on, in London because... I, I get it, it's London. It's just yeah. the way that it is. I don't <laughs> mind paying in a beef for, for for you know twenty five euro for a bottle of water because that's just what happens over there. Mm. However, paying six pound fifty for a flat pint of Madrid is not what I'm wanting on a Saturday afternoon. And I think again, that's where I'm saying you're missing. You know, for a fan base that's already put out, for instance, how much we are season ticket? We're we're over three hundred quid. Yeah, we're knocking up four hundred quid. So, and then you're thinking, right, well, because if, if, the, if the pints, let's say, well, let's say it were £3 a pint, and then you want to go to game, you probably think, well, we'll go to ground an hour early and have a few pints, mm. you know, in, back at stand before game. And now what lads are doing is that they'll be drinking in town yeah. and then walking to game five minutes before. Because, and, and for me, it's all about party atmosphere if you were to, to do all that. Like, I can remember when we went to Accrington Stanley um, a few years ago in League One, they had like a really big marquee and stuff. And yeah, it was a really small ground, but that encouraged fans to get to ground before a game and mm. that, the atmosphere was amazing. And I think surely that's what that fan zone's all about, is to like really bring fans to game and in numbers before that, rather than £6.50. I know how people go, you don't be a tight Yorkshire member. I just think it's extortion of it, to be honest yeah. with you. Well, um, I, I, I did a video about it and put it out there. There were quite a lot of people and think I up and down jumped on and they did a thing on some of the socials about the price increases like pies and crisps and snacks and stuff. And I can go into Mount and buy two pints for like around about seven quid. Yeah, you go down there and you get like £6.50 for, like I said, in a plastic cup, flat beer. And it's like... It's no comparison, and you, you notice because when you walk down to the ground, there's more people stepping out later. In, like I said, via town, East Dean, you know, wherever they're supping, there's not um, you walking out at the ground, there's no mass queues before game starts. The no, they just, were um, in, they were all stood up at top at shop at um, yeah, getting tinnies in at top before a mm. game because it's <laughs> get a four pack for get a four pack for seven, six, seven quid. So you know what I mean? And I know it sounds daft, but, you know, why would you? I mean, yeah. 
um, honest. But again, that's another thing we look. I'm not going to sit here all day and complain because whatever, you know, that's the price that they put. But just read the room a bit. Mm. You know, I, I don't know who's fault to that. And thought, oh well, yeah, yeah. You know, I think well, forget. You know, you know, eighteen eighteen pound for three for you know nearly twenty quid for three. Who's going to who's going to pay that in the right mind? I mean, even for away fans, I think it was six fifty. Mm. For you know, same for away fans. I just don't get it. I just mm. don't get it. Um, Opportunity that, missed. Yeah, and I just think that's well. Yeah, you bring in Madri in before it. I don't. I think I don't even think they had that in. I think it was just Carlin or someone else. Mm. So at least they're going a bit more exactly. European. <laughs> Surprised they've got not not gone American and, and got a, got a <laughs> Budweiser, got a, got a diner in the East End. <laughs> It might be on books that bit council, that might be another yeah. debate about like coming up, yeah. yeah. The diner, yeah, it might be something else. Yeah, uh, surprised that, yeah, you know, everything's <laughs> you know, I'm surprised the pitch hasn't got like a um you know, like those like shootout areas when you're playing NFL. Oh You've yeah, got yeah, like yeah. Barnsley, yeah. like Barnes <laughs> Barnsley, like red and white in massive thing, you know, and I just think why let's just all let's just go American. We may as well join MLS where Jewel is going, have we? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she'll have to fund us getting to games, but you know, I won't mind. Um, Start flying private jets. Yeah, that, just, like, just, put, just, just put star and stripes on home kit, <laughs> Julie. Just put American flag on front. Just forget it. <laughs> just get rid of Barnes the flag and put USA flag on. We're not bothered, are we? <laughs> Rams, honestly, I am. I'm not. I am not surprised. Uh, I'm. I'm surprised we haven't got like a diner or like a Frankie and Benny's or somewhere like that in ground. Um. Cheerleaders, that sort of thing. Hey, watching um, this, it might be on cards. You never know. Yeah. I might be giving them a few yeah. ideas. A hot dog stand. <laughs> and, um, that sort of thing, you know. Everybody whooping each other. That, that score the goal. Thing, yeah. Um, yeah. And do you know, like, when you're at baseball and it goes, or basketball and it does, like, duh, 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 or, or, duh, duh, music duh, instant, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so whenever we've got ball, that music's on, like, in the thing. <laughs> So they got rid of electric. They've got rid of electric sponsorship boards, and they bring that in of it of it. Of it, so We've got all going. Duh, duh, duh. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's got a bit of light-hearted humour, aren't we? Yeah, we've got um, to. Do. We've got to. Do. But probably um, somebody can kind of quote this and put it in two years' time, and this might actually happen. It won't surprise me at all. Uh, I, I, yeah, I've never thought I'd see day where we get pink as third kit. Maybe. Maybe on breast breast cancer awareness day, I'm all for that. That's yep. like a really good thing, and I think they're doing that for Huddersfield away game, aren't they? Some yep, of yeah, fans are yeah. just doing like pink shirts, which is great. Yeah, um, and I think some Huddersfield fans are joining on that as well because I think a couple of seasons ago they had like a pink top, pink. Yeah, shirt. I mean that's I amazing. Like, that's great. I'm, I'm yeah. all for that. Yeah, you know, I worked at hospice for seven years, so I, I know how much you know that affects people, and you know the more awareness and the more money raised, amazing. Better, that's yeah. amazing. Um, but. You know, I can remember Palermo Italian side of the pink shirt, and I can remember it was a lot nicer than what we've got ours. Mm. It looks like I, I don't know. I can remember them like um, Crayola crayons, mm. and pink ones they used to get. It looks like somebody's just got like a stick man and got a Crayola crayon like a pink one, and just be oh yeah, well, and then we'll just, it just looks honestly absolutely terrible. I mean, but all you could have the green and white one from when we were in Premier League. That mm. like like we had on go for, go for that again. Mm. We can have the cream one from when we were in uh, under under John Hendry. That yeah. aura one, cream and blue one. That were like, I blue. really like that one. Yeah. Uh, could even just go for a black one. We don't even have to have a third kit. No. Um, but there we go. We probably we probably do, but they, I don't know. I just don't I just don't agree with it. Some people like like it, but that just sums us up that we've probably got worst kit in country. But it's right, isn't it? You say. It's what yeah, we do. It's right. It's right. It's what like, we do. It's because it's what we do, innit? We're Barnsley, aren't we? We never do not normal. We always got to be different, haven't we? We've got to look at last yeah. season's own shirt for that, haven't we? Yeah. How much uh, publicity it got and it worked. And then sponsors for the season before, like yeah. in a <laughs> being news. <laughs> yeah. Being news and then uh, yeah. yeah. So got to be different, haven't we? Another there'll be another fiasco comes out soon enough, mate. We'll probably have not registered manager and he's probably, I don't know, he probably owes about four million to HMRC or something like that. <laughs> For tax reasons. Yeah, yeah. Right Mal- about, it? Maladden's probably Serbian <laughs> mafia or something like that. Wanted man and fugitive on the run. Um, Wait for the next one. 
coming yeah. up like it headlines at Chronicle. Yeah. Uh, so, Luke, as always, mate, it's been a pleasure. We've had a bit of laugh and a bit of fun at ending it. Uh, You've got to, mate, haven't you? Got to, got to laugh at the sends. Uh, also, I heard about transfers, manual game coming up as well. Season where we go, you know, it's uh, like I say, we're walking before we can run, but a lot more positive uh, steps. It looks like we've been put in place with regards to recruitment, quality rather than quantity. Uh, set room staff, Daryl Clark, his own man, he, he, you know, he seems to know what he wants in standards. Uh, but yeah, we'll re- come back to this and have a look back on stuff, how things have been going. Like I said, all being well, get to Christmas and we're up in right here for the table, knocking on automatics rather than knocking on... Uh, yeah, we've just got to get some consistency, mate, because, you know, Birmingham's obviously a very good side, you know, they're expected to win it on a canter. Huddersfield are mm. a good team, we know about what Duff can offer. Mm. You've got Charlton, um, Wrexham, Stop obviously, with their money, Stockport, you know, mm. Peterborough always score goals at this level. Mm. Um, obviously, Bolton's at a poor start, and I think that, you know, they'll probably get they'll probably get rid of Everett, won't they? But, you know, mm. I think for us, we've just got to focus on what we do, yeah. Take each game as simple as that. Get to the Christmas, New Year, be a mix. Um, don't be too far adrift, but just big, picking up form at the right time. And then it's about, if we are in that position again, going back to recruitment, be like, right, well, we clearly need, we, if we want to go up, you've got to back the manager and do yeah. it. Because we can't just be like, oh, we're fifth, but we don't know what about it. If you want to, if you, we're there for a reason, back the players. Push for it. Reward the players, bring a bit more quality in, reward the manager and the staff. Reward the fans and be like, right, well, yeah, obviously championships complete. You know, it's a different league than it was it was four or five years ago. Money that's been messed about with, but you know, I'd rather us be up there than you know. I'd rather us just be going in, in it with a chance. Yes, yeah, yeah. you know, and and going into each game, and be like, yeah, we can be competitive and been up there. And yeah, it's probably a bit of a tougher league than last year with some quality inside and you know teams that come up etc. That are obviously League One teams already in essence, but. Um, we, that's where we should be. We, for you know, third season in the league, we've we recruited quite well. We've kept as better players. We, you know, on his day, we've got a good eleven. Mm. Um, it's just about that consistency in games that we need to be getting a bit more of. But that'll come. It's only September. You know, I, I think judge them in January and December, and, and, and we'll probably have a better outlook of, of yeah, where yeah. we're going to be and, and what we're about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Luke, as always, mate, it's a pleasure talking to you. We've covered You're quite welcome, a lot mate. of stuff and uh, good in-depth in talks and thoughts on that. Uh, people watching, let us know your thoughts about everything what we've been discussing, transfer policy, Daryl Clark, manual game, standards and stuff like that, the prices of uh, food and beverages. Uh, but, yeah, thanks for watching. One thing left to say, you Reds. You Reds.